Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for joining us. The following presentation will be discussion regarding minimally invasive treatment of brain and spine using radiosurgical techniques. Dr. Jason Sheehan from University of Virginia will be our discussion. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be here, Aaron, and uh, uh, thank you for inviting me. I'm, I'm going to talk a little bit about minimally invasive approaches to brain and spine disease, and in particular, really focus on radiosurgical applications in modern day neurosurgical practices. If we think about the definition of minimally invasive approaches, really it boils down to this as depicted on the slide, the notion of, of avoiding hopefully some of the pitfalls of an open surgery and, and using indirect observation to reduce trauma and to minimize hospital stays as well as associated costs and comorbidities that can arise from open procedures. Certainly in neurosurgery, we don't think of putting a Band-Aid over patients, and in radiosurgery, we don't use those types of dressings. But the whole concept of using minimally invasive approaches has been one that, that our discipline has come to embrace. When we think about other fields in minimally invasive approaches, we certainly think about general surgeons who use laparoscopic approaches, orthopedic surgeons who do arthroscopic procedures, percutaneous approaches, which we do some of in neurosurgery. Certainly, we do a lot of endovascular approaches for aneurysms and arterial venous malformations. And in some instances, we even use robotic surgery, and, and certain radiosurgical devices use robotic approaches as well. Here depicted here is a typical laparoscopic surgical case for a general surgeon. And here is a robotic uh, case of, a, you know, for instance, a urologist who might be doing robotic surgery with the da Vinci. Well, why do we do minimally invasive approaches? Certainly, we know all too well that opening up the head when it might be able to be avoided uh, can convey to patients a better chance of, of a favorable outcome. Here, uh, as a very insightful work uh, entitled When the Air Hits Your Brain, detailing the tales of neurosurgery by one neurosurgeon. We can think of it, though, as being a rather complex approach, almost like building a ship in a bottle. It's not easy to do minimally invasive approaches within the brain and the spine. Over the last three decades, there have been substantial advances that have allowed us to do minimally invasive approaches and to do radiosurgery in centers throughout the world, first being uh, uh, the application of stereotactic capabilities in the 1980s, the idea of using routinely stereotactic data sets and frames to more precisely and safely guide our surgery. And then in the 1990s, with the proliferation of CT and MRI, we all of a sudden had a, a ability to guide radiation beams in a way that that utilize those stereotactic principles, but with image guidance in a way to reduce risks and really truly be minimally invasive. Well, what does the term stereotactic radiosurgery mean? If we think about it in the context of, of uh, the underlying words, it, stereo is Greek for stereo, so meaning three-dimensional. Tactic is Latin for tactus or to touch, and radio is Latin for radius or beam. And really what we hope to do is to uh, touch a very small area within the brain, an area that's causing problems for the patient, maybe pathologic tissue or, or tissue that's firing too much, or, uh, and to cause very little in the way of ripple effects in the surrounding brain tissues. If we think about it in the context of a simple analogy here, you can think about the, this child trying to harness the rays of the sun with a magnifying glass, and that harnessing uh, of those rays allows them to burn a leaf. Certainly, I have a brother who's a neurosurgeon, and when we, when he and I would play as, as children, if we both had magnifying glasses, it was easier to harness the rays of the sun and to collimate them on a leaf and to singe it in a way that wouldn't wouldn't cause damage if we held our hand in between the magnifying glass but it would cause damage to leaf itself at that focal point of both our magnifying glasses. Lexell embraced this principle of stereotactic radiosurgery in the early 1950s. It was really in the 1960s he developed the early gamma knife, uh, and uh, this is the latest version of the gamma knife to gamma knife perfection. Certainly there are other radiosurgical tools that can be used, and we'll touch upon those um, 